4.3 is polynomial inequalities. So this time we're instead of looking at linear equations, we're going to look at some polynomials, a quadratic and a cubic function. And at the end of this, I'm going to do um, what I would have given my class for a quiz. So um, again, don't forget to subscribe. If I get to a thousand subscribers, I might consider doing the calculus and vectors course next. Okay, so let's look at this one. Solving a factorable quadratic inequality. Keyword here, factorable. Okay, so you need to be able to factor this to find the zeros. Now you could find the zeros using the quadratic formula, so I don't know why they limit it to a factorable one, except maybe just for the example. Okay, so first things first, we've got a six on the wrong side of the equation. We need to bring it over to here to set it to zero so that we're finding the zeros of the function. So that's pretty easy. Subtract. So I want to know where is this equation less than zero? Now I'm going to show you two techniques. One is the way the textbook likes to do it. The other is the way I think you should do it because it's 10 times easier and much less work. And we're all about saving time here, right? Okay, so let's factor this. Multiplies to negative six and adds to positive one. So that means plus three minus two. So I have x plus three times x minus two is less than zero. So now in the chart method to solve this, what they would do is they'd say, okay, so I want to know, um, you know what the zeros are, first of all, the zeros are minus three and plus two. So I'm going to see what happens in the different quadrants here. So I wanna look at what happens here. I wanna know what happens between these two zeros. And I wanna know what happens after this zero. Now, the reason I'm showing you here first, I wanna save this to last, because I mean, this is the easiest way to do it, right? So let's look here. So we have two factors. We have x plus three and we have x minus two. And I want to know what happens when x is less than minus three. I want to know what happens when x is between minus three and two. And I want to know what happens when x is greater than two. So what you would do in using the tables, and again, your teacher might teach you this way, so she might, or he might expect you to show this on your test. So what you would do is you'd say, okay, let's pick a number that's less than negative three, negative four. Don't go crazy. Don't make it hard. So negative four plus three is a negative solution. Negative four minus two is a negative solution. And a negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, so this is negative times negative gave me positive. So that means that in this area for x less than negative three, it's going to be plus, so greater than zero. Now I go between here, well, easiest one to pick is zero. Zero plus three is positive. Zero minus two is negative, and a positive times a negative is a negative. And finally, where's x greater than two? I'm gonna pick three. Three plus three is six, that's a positive number, and three minus two is a positive number, and a positive times a positive is a positive. So this says it's going to be greater than zero in this quadrant, or not in this quadrant, but in this area for x less than negative three and for x greater than two. Now you could have solved this much, much easier by just using your head and a little bit of graphing skills. You know we're graphing a quadratic. You have found the zeros. You know that it's concave up. So a quick sketch of this shows that the parabola is going to look something like this. I'm not worried about how far down it goes, unless your teacher asks you for a very accurate sketch of this, but that would be something that you would do um, in a calculus class. So what I want to know is where is this function less than zero? So less than zero, again, remember that when you're using less than zero, that means you're not including the points. So I'm gonna put a circle here, a circle here, and you see how under here it's less than zero. So there's my answer, it's right here. Where is it greater than zero? Well, that would be 
up this way, right, the blue lines. So to solve this now, I would just say, um, therefore, minus 3 is less than x is less than 2 is the solution. Okay, so that's where this would be less than 0. Okay, so this again is the interval method. This is the graphical method. Much easier to do this method. Okay, let's try another one. We're going to look at solving a factorable cubic inequality. So here's our cubic function. Now remember the first thing you need to do when you're using a cubic function is the factor theorem. That was back in chapter 3. The factor theorem says if I can find a number that sets it equal to 0, then x minus that number is a factor of the, the function or the polynomial. Okay, so let's go to town here and see if we can figure out a number that works. So I would try, remember you're looking for factors of minus 3, so I'm going to try f at 1. So that would give me 1 plus 3 minus 1 minus 3, which is 0. So that means x minus 1 is a factor. Remember that from chapter 3. Okay, so now I need to find, I want to get this into um, a quadratic. So I'm going to divide, I'm going to use my synthetic division. So I'm going to use 1. I'm going to do my upside down division sign. And I'm going to put in the numbers from the coefficients of these numbers and this constant. So I bring down the 1, write my 1 here, multiply by 1, I add them. I multiply 4 by 1, I add them. I multiply 1 times 3 and I get 0. And you have to get 0, right? Or you're wrong. Okay, so this gives me my quadratic. Remember, this is your constant. This is your x term. This is your x squared. So I have x squared plus 4x plus 3 equals 0. Now I want to factor this, multiplies to 3, adds to 4, obviously 3 and 1. So this is x plus 1 times x plus 3 equals 0. So now I have the whole function factored. And I can make a statement now. I can say x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x plus 3. I want to know where is that greater than or equal to 0. So again, you could make a table like this one above. I would put in these three intervals. I'll do it really quickly. So I'll show you. I would do this. I would do this one. I would do this one. And I would say, okay, what happens when? Now let's do, let's do the quick way that I really think you should focus on understanding. I'm going to make, um, I'm going to put it on a coordinate plane. So I'm going to find my zeros. So my zeros are 1, minus 1, and minus 3. So here's minus 3, here's minus 1, and here's 1. Now remember what we learned way back, maybe chapter 2. Don't even remember myself now, it's been so long. And we know that this is a cubic function where the leading coefficient is positive. So remember that means a function is going to start in this quadrant, end in this quadrant. We have the three zeros. So I know that my cubic function is going to look something like this. Okay, so you make a great a, a quick sketch. I want to know where is this greater than or equal to zero. So I'm going to get some colors going here. So greater than or equal to means I'm going to include these points. And here's greater than and include this point, and here's greater than. So greater than just means it's above the x-axis, right? So it's above the x-axis. So these blue zones are my solutions. Now, if you did a table, you would have had for x is less than or equal to negative 3, you'd have uh, minus 3 to minus 2, and you would have x greater than or equal to 1. And then you would do the same thing that I showed you above. 
So you look at each of these quadrants, less than negative 3, do negative 4. Negative 4 minus 1, negative. Negative 4 plus 1, negative. Negative 4 plus 3, negative. A negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. And notice over here, it is. It's negative down here. Now, if my chart is proper, this area between minus 3 and minus 2 should be positive. So, minus 3 and minus 2, oh my goodness, we're going to have to use a decimal. So, let's do minus 2 and a half. Make sure you've got the right numbers. Minus 2 and a half minus 1 is negative. Minus 2 and a half plus 1 is negative. Minus 2 and a half plus 3 is positive, And a negative times a negative is a positive times a positive is a positive. And finally, this one greater than 1, let's pick 2. 2 minus 1, positive. 2 plus 1, positive. 2 plus 3, positive. Whoops. Yeah, we're right. And this is all positive. Did I? What I do? Mistake here. We had negative. We have positive. Oh, between, we forgot between minus 2 and minus, and minus 2 and 1. This is greater than 1. So that's this part here. We've got this part in here. That's why I hate tables. Okay, so, well, I'm just going to blah, blah, blah. Yeah, there was a negative one in between. And that shows negative, positive, negative, positive. But there's no reason why you should have gone ahead and even bothered to do this without using um, a graphing table. Okay, so it looks like my phone is running out of power. Let's see if I can quickly fix that before I lose everything. I can't. Pause it. Mm -mm -mm. Oh dear. Might have to continue. Low battery. I think I think I'm okay. Just hang in there, babies. Okay, so that's what we want to look at here. Let's flip over and take a look at another example. Sometimes you need to rearrange an equation before factoring. So here I am, I've got 4x squared minus 5x is greater than or equal to this. So you know the, you know the drill here. You have to bring everything to the other side first. So I have 4x squared minus 2x squared minus 5x plus x minus 30 is greater than or equal to 0. So that gives me 2x squared minus 4x minus 30 is greater than or equal to 0. Now you know if I divide there's a common factor here so let's divide both sides by 2. I'll just write that over here. So that gives me x squared minus 2x minus 15 is greater than or equal to 0. And now I'm looking for multiplies to minus 15 and adds to minus 2. And of course that would just be minus 5 and 3. x minus 5, x plus 3, greater than or equal to 0. And again this is a quadratic, so I can write it like a quadratic. I'll put a 5 here and a minus 3 here. I know it's concave up because the leading coefficient is positive. And this is pretty similar to the one we previously did. Okay, so it's greater than or equal to. We didn't finish that on the other one, probably because I panicked about running out of power. So I have um, x is less than or equal to negative 3. And x is greater than or equal to 5. Okay, so the different types of notation, again, if I wanted to write this out for you, I could, um, this would be set notation, of course. We could also use an inter interval notation where I would say x is an element of, so I'm going from negative infinity, so this is less than this, so I go to negative infinity to minus 3 with a square bracket, and then you would write a big U, that means union, which means I'm also including the other interval, which would be greater than or equal to 5, so 5 comma infinity round bracket. Okay, so that's a notation you should also know. This is your interval notation, right? Inter, oops, interval. 
Okay, so let's look at the last question here. Find the values of x such that this is less than 12. Okay, so we have a cubic function, which means we're going to need the factor theorem. So let's rewrite this. 6x cubed plus 7x squared minus 16x minus 12 is less than 0. So now I need to find um, a factor that's going to make this left side equal to 0. And I know the answer ahead of time, f at minus 2, I'll let you do that on your own, equals 0. And then, of course, you'd have to do some long division. So I'm going to do my minus 2, long division, 6, 7, minus 16, minus 12. Bring down the 6, add them up, plus 10, minus 6, plus 12, 0. Yay. Okay, so... Now I have 6x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals 0. And I want to know a product of 36, sorry, negative 36, and a sum of minus 5, and that would be minus 9 and positive 4. Don't forget, at this point, because it's a complex trinomial, you put them over 6 and you reduce the fractions. So that gives me minus 3 over 2, and this would give me 2 over 3. So my factors are 2x minus 3 and 3x plus 2. Okay, so this whole equation here now becomes this. So I had f at minus 2 was a 0. That means x plus 2 is a factor, and I have 2x minus 3. And I have 3x plus 2, and this is all now less than 0. So quickly, you're going to make a sketch of this function. You're going to put in your zeros. So minus 2 is a 0. 3 halves, that's 1 and a half. So 3 halves. And the other one would be minus 2 thirds. Now, it's a cubic function with a positive leading coefficient. So again, my function has to go in this direction. So I'm going to start here, I'm going to go down, and I'm going to go back up. Now, it doesn't matter how far down you come. Your teacher might ask you to find the x-intercept. Um, never assume that the x-intercept, uh, sorry, the y-intercept, uh, never assume that it is the lowest point on this part of the function. Because as you can see, if I drew this, I could make this go way down. So just don't fall into that trap. Okay, so we've got all this done, and I want to know where it is less than zero. So very easily, less than zero, open circle this way, open circle from here to here, open circle. So the solution is going to be x is less than minus 2, comma, um, x is between this one, what was this number again? Um, minus two-thirds. Minus two-thirds less than x, less than three halves. Okay, so you have to, you have to look at your graph here, make sure that you've got all the intervals covered. So this one, that's less than minus two. Now interval notation, let's do that for you as well. So less than minus two means round bracket negative infinity comma, so it goes from minus infinity to minus 2, round bracket, because it doesn't include this point, union with a big U, and now I'm going to throw it from minus 2 thirds to 3 halves. And there you go. That's how you would do that. It's not very difficult. I'm sure with a little practice you can ace this. Okay, everybody, have a good day. Bye for now.